I want to speak today a message about pulling down strongholds, about overcoming spiritual strongholds in our lives. In our ministry and in the ministry of Jesus, deliverance was normal and not only this weekend but we practice deliverance. But deliverance is one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is also breaking down strongholds. Uh, a very known exorcist and person who uh, who is used in the area of deliverance uh, said that an open door is how the demons come in a stronghold is how the demon stays in and he outlined uh, six strongholds the first one is fear it's yielding to the real or imagined possibility of impending danger rather than trusting in God we've seen this stronghold during the COVID pretty common the second stronghold is anger. It's aggressiveness based on some perceived injustice that gives away to wrath. The third one is rejection. It's allowing an, the act of abandonment to instill feelings of worthlessness. The fourth one is depression. It's being overwhelmed with sadness and despair to the point of hopelessness. The fifth one is abuse. It's victimization that gives away to anger and resentment. And the uh, sixth one is self-hatred. It's intense aversion to one's self-worth that denies the worth and value of humans as unique creators of God and worthy of His love. And so Satan uses an open door like a cult, an open door like bringing demonic objects of willful disobedience or some other things to get in. But once the devil gets in into somebody's life, he usually does two things. He seeks to destroy them and build them at the same time destroy their life and build a mindset that even if you get the demons out the person will still be tormented because of the stronghold that Satan has built. The stronghold that Satan builds becomes the house for the devil. It becomes his dwelling place, his resting place and these strongholds like anger, like rejection, these strongholds like abuse, self-hatred, they do more damage to people than actually demons themselves devil is finite he cannot do all of his work everywhere at the same time so he needs the strongholds and the demons to cause hurt and pain to people so that they will live in self-inflicted or this mental anguish inflicted lives and the bible has a lot to say on how for us to pull them down if you have your bible or if you have an app uh, a bible on your phone i want us to go together to corinthians first corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 and verse 5. we also want to remind you that all of our notes on the uversion bible app and sometimes it's very difficult to write everything down all of them are there and you can save them to your phone first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 10 and verse uh, chapter 10 I'm sorry Ch chapter 10 verse 4 and verse 5 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exal exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ the hist historians say that Corinth was an ancient city there was a hill of 1857 feet high on the top of that hill was a fortress and that fortress had walls around it and inside of that fortress was a tower and people were there in that fortress who were really there like the commanding like the commanding center of the city and so there's a picture behind if you could be kind to put a photo uh, behind me of something it's not like that but there's something like that where on the top of the hill there was a wall that protected a tower and in that tower and in that little fortress lived people who pretty much ruled the city of Corinth and so it was elevated it was high and so if you see the Corinthians how Paul is describing he says to pull down the stronghold anything that is exalted is, itself against the knowledge of God bring that down and to take every captive meaning like a soldier that's running the whole show from this commanding center they're no longer going to be commanders but they're now going to be captives bring them into captivity of Christ so Paul is describing actually someone's mind 
as you're looking at the physical picture I want you to imagine that's really what happens in the mindset a stronghold has three factors in it walls towels towers I'm sorry not towels they sound so alike towers and captives somebody say walls towers and captives who are not captives when you meet them they are captains when you meet them but you have to turn captains into captives somebody say walls towers and then captives walls speak of lies towers speak of things that are exaggerated in our mind not exalted to God because anything that we exalt that is not God is exaggerated only God can never be exaggerated when he's exalted you can never exaggerate God you can never exaggerate God's promises God's power and God's goodness but you can exaggerate the sickness you can exaggerate your circumstances you can exaggerate your past and you can exaggerate yourself come on somebody and so there are walls which are lies there are towers things that are exaggerated and then last one is the thoughts that are currently the captains but they have to become captives and so that's what we're going to talk with right now if you take your notes write this down the spiritual walls are built with lies spiritual walls are destroyed by the truth in other words spiritual walls are broken down when we confront the lie and conform to the truth but spiritual walls, walls are built when we conform to the lie and criticize the truth strongholds are built with lies and this lie is a wall that goes around our life and that lie many times does not come as like a like a lie it's just something that is contrary to the truth for us as Christians the truth is not the fact the truth is not what we see and what we feel the truth is what God's Word says for us as Christians the truth the Bible says Jesus says I am the truth so God's Word is the truth everything else is not and if what God says contradicts what I feel then what I feel is a lie if what God says is the truth and what I see is contradicts then what I see becomes a lie because opposite of the truth is not reality or facts it's the lie and so what the enemy does is he wants us to reject the truth of God and build our mind with our feelings with our facts with our reality and call that truth my friend just because it's true it doesn't make it truth your feelings are true but God's word is the truth the sickness in the body is true but the healing in Jesus's body is my truth the fact that I fall into my past sin is true but it's what Jesus said is the truth so what many people do is they take what is true and make it truth and that's how the lie is formed let's take Israel for example God calls them an army but they call themselves grasshoppers in fact scripture says in Exodus chapter 6 verse 26 these are Aaron and Moses to whom the Lord said bring out the children of Israel from the land of Egypt according to their slaves that's not what the Bible says when they were slaves God called them bring them out according to their armies God already saw them as an army you see a little bit later in Exodus chapter 12 verse 41 and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years on the very same day it came to pass that all the armies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt God didn't call them slaves he did not call them losers or victims he called them the armies of the Lord we see later on again and again but I want you to see how they saw themselves numbers 13 verse 33 when we saw the giants the descendants of Anak 
came from the giants we were like grasshoppers in our own side and so we were in their sight they're saying we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and they also saw us as, as grasshoppers so God says you're a soldier but you feel like a grasshopper the truth is what God said what you feel what you see what the doctor's report says what your coach said what your ex said about you is true but the truth is God's Word lies are things that are true they're just not the truth and when they become built brick by brick thought by thought word by word they become a wall in which we have a demonic stronghold of fear demonic stronghold of anger demonic stronghold of abuse demonic stronghold of self-hate demonic stronghold of rejection nobody likes me i am worthless i will never succeed and then we have these confirmations the circumstances seem to line up to confirm our dominant thoughts about ourselves in reality all of that is demonic scandal it's demonic agenda we've allowed things that are true that are not the truth to penetrate fill and saturate our mind and today we have a wall and God wants to break down the walls of lies you may not you may feel like a grasshopper you may feel rejected you may feel abandoned you may have been rejected you may have been a person that has been even victimized but you must understand as a Christian you, what God says now determines your truth and so you have to fight against the lie you have to resist the lie and you have to receive and assist the truth not only God said to them that they were an army and they said we're grasshoppers but God also said about the promised land he says the promised land was land good large and flowing with milk and honey did you know what they said about the promised land it's the land that devours its inhabitants so God says it's a good land it's a large land it flows with milk and honey and they said it's the land that eats anybody that steps on it so you don't eat from the land it eats you now that's scary what happened there is a truth and there is also fear lies they despise the promised land what does that teach me is that as a Christian when I get delivered when I get saved I have to adjust my attitude toward God's truth I have to adjust my thoughts, my words to what God says, even if temporarily, currently. It's the furthest thing from being true. Even if there is a conflict between what God said and what I feel, I have a choice to what do I conform to, the truth or what is true. The conflict, my friend, gives me a choice. The conflict does not pull me to the lie or the truth. The conflict is the fork in the road. Now I have to choose what do I conform and what do I confront? What do I adjust and what do I attack? Because the moment I adjust to the lie, I will attack the truth. The moment I conform to the lie, I will be uncomfortable with the truth. I will criticize the truth. I will make fun of the truth. I will say those people are crazy. They believe stuff they don't see. They believe stuff that is not even real. You will begin to criticize the very thing. Why? Because when you adjust it to the lie, you're scared of the light. It hurts your eyes because you're so used to the dark. You said, turn that off. It hurts my eyes. 
because you've been complacent and you've been adjusted to the lie that you are not loved that nobody cares about you your life will mean nothing that you have no plans and you have God has no plans and you have no future that you rejected by everybody nobody ever will ever like you and marry you or you will never have this and you will never have that and you got so used to the dark you adjusted your attitude to the lie that today you attack the light you attack the truth my friend what God says and what we feel will always contradict which creates a conflict and in this conflict we have a choice God doesn't make this choice for us devil cannot force us God will stand on one side and say come this way I'll renew your mind and transform your life and the devil says no but this is easier you have to do nothing just walk in this path and you don't have to confront lies you just be as things are just let the let let it flow let it go let it flow and the life is gonna end up where you don't want to go and then you're gonna blame God because he lets you be like that you're gonna blame people because they don't love you you're gonna blame the doctor you're gonna blame Trump you're gonna blame Wall Street it's always gonna be somebody's fault because you are a victim but in reality my friend God wants us to adjust to the truth and attack the lie. Adjust to the truth and attack what is true but is not the truth. Can somebody say amen? amen. Israel said the land is going to eat us up. Can I ask you a question? Do you despise God's promises in your life? Do you despise your family? Do you despise the process you're currently taking? Do you despise prophetic words? Have you despised God's peace? Have you despised the small little good things? Because you don't allow God's truth to become the stronghold. But the enemy has built a lie. It has infiltrated your attention. It has infiltrated your confession. And it has infiltrated your attitude. And today it's the spirit of your mind, meaning it's the atmosphere of your inner being you're a negative person you're an angry person you are a victim in fact nobody can have a conversation with you for more than 60 seconds without the real you showing up without the blame game sticking in without pretty much you are now that person it's no longer what happened to you it's now who you are nobody wants to be friends with you nobody wants to hire you and you use all of that that people are doing to you as a confirmation that you were right what, what did Israel do the moment they came to the Lord and they said we can't take the land the land will eat us God it, it, it eats people like we step in <laughs> takes us in it's like the horror film the land eats people we are like grasshoppers we're nobody but God says the land is good no I hate it I don't like it it eats me some of you that's what God says about your spouse <laughs> you say your spouse eats me God says that's a good spouse flowing with milk and honey no Lord you gave me a crazy woman you gave me a crazy husband but God says I want you to conform to the truth don't conform to your spouse and then this is what happened they came they complained they whined and then this is what happened the Bible says and then they said and they presumed to go up unto a hilltop nevertheless the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp then Amalekites came down and the Canaanites which dwelt in that hill and smote them and this discomforted them and even unto Hormah. Numbers chapter 14 verse 44 and verse 45. Then they went to fight only to have their suspicions and presumptions confirmed that they are losers. And guess what happened? They lost the battle. They just got confirmed they're not meant to win. They are grasshoppers. Lent does eat people for lunch and their life sucks. Because when you lost a battle here, 
you will always lose a battle in life. Why fight for your marriage if you already lost that in here? Why fight for prosperity if you are poor here? Honestly, why even go to college? Why try to win a battle on the outside if you have surrendered to the battle on the inside? Why fight Amalekites if you don't first fight your own attitude? Why first do that? Because when we lose a battle mentally, we will lose a battle as a military. They lost it as a military because they first lost it here. I've seen this more than I can count. In fact, I lived this myself. I was that person. I was negative. I was convinced nobody loved me. And I had evidence to prove that. It's my face. I did not like how I looked. And the crazy part is this. The more I said that about myself, the more I felt that, the more confirmation happened on the outside to confirm that. And it's almost like everywhere I went, I got more confirmation that I was a loser. That my life will mean nothing. I will never succeed. I will never be of any value to anybody else. And all of that was just like my testimony. See, that person said this. Those people kicked me out. Those people never invited. That person never even acknowledged. I passed them by. Those people, I feel a vibe from them. I don't like it. And all of that, I used it to confirm, Vlad, what you believe about yourself is true. My friend, because anytime you allow that lie to come in, the devil will always send you testimonies. Your personal confirmations. And Israel just had one. They lost the battle. Why? Because they lost it here first. My friend, what I want to encourage you is to take the walls down brick by brick. It won't happen through one message. It won't happen through one book. And it might not even happen in one year. But if you will begin to practically, few things. Commit to the truth. Somebody say commit to the truth. Commit to study the truth. Commit to memorize the truth. Commit to fill yourself with the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Somebody say commit to the truth. You might still not feel it. You might not believe it yet. Commit to reading it, studying it and memorizing it. The second thing is this. Is conform to the truth by confessing it. Not feeling it your feelings will not be there yet meaning you conform your mind to the truth by confessing the truth you might not feel strong say let the weak say i am not weak but strong let the poor say i am blessed i am rich let the sick say i am healthy fighting sickness instead of saying what you feel say what you know conform your mind begin to adjust your mind slowly but surely you might have still the same attacks you might still have the same problems you might still feel like it's the same life and what God says is not truth but if you will begin to commit to study the truth and then conform your mind by confessing the truth and the last one is is you have to confront the lies by the confession when the thought comes in you're worthless say devil let me stop you right there uh no you're a liar your life sucks you're going to hell i'm not uh-huh bye-bye you confront the lie you confront the lie if one of your if, if one of your friends moves on from your life and says you suck nobody will ever marry you say you know what stop talking about yourself like that because that is not about me okay I don't know who you're describing but that's definitely not me maybe the old me but that died on the cross 2,000 years ago the new me is a new creation in Christ I can do more all, all things through Jesus Christ I'm more than a conqueror talk to my hand because my head doesn't hear you you have to confront that and you have to stop people in the tracks and say no 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 that 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 that, that is you not describing me you're describing you but not me because people always see things not the way they are the way they are so just because they're angry at you in reality they're really angry at themselves hurt people hurt people are you with me somebody say walls of lies so the strongholds are built with walls of lies the second I want you to say this with me say towers of exaggeration in Corinthians it says this, it says that 
we not only bring down the stronghold so that speaks of breaking down walls but then he says now we're climbing the hill and there is a tower it's a command center it's kind of like we have an air, airline tower that controls the traffic of the airplanes we have also other towers in the city it's, it's people who make very important decisions but we also have a tower in our mind it's built by exaggeration so Paul is saying we have to bring down anything that is exalted above the knowledge of God Israel and these spies they also had a tower that they built they exaggerated the giants now giants were big no question about it the reference to the descendants of Anak as Nephilims was designed to install fear in the hearts of Israelites the Nephilims the fallen ones as noted in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 were the offspring of the sons of God angelic beings or divine warriors and the daughters of men the Nephilim were of large statue but they would have have been destroyed by Noah's flood so it's the best to conclude that frightened spies have exaggerated the giants the real real giants died already they were not there they died in a flood but when you are scared you're not only believing a lie you're also building a tower what is the tower it's when we exaggerate the status of our problem and why does that happen it's very simple when you don't exalt God you will always exaggerate the problem if we don't exalt God we will exaggerate our giants the best way not to exaggerate the problem is to exalt God because when you exalt God you always have a proper perspective on your problems have you ever been on the airplane and as the plane goes up all the houses become smaller you begin to see from a perspective of an elevated altitude when you exalt God problems become their normal size small when you exaggerate the problem you're building a stronghold called the tower right in the middle of the stronghold and Paul is saying in Corinthians to bring down everything that's been exalted my word is exaggerated above the knowledge of God sickness is real but so is healing weakness is real but so is the strength of God your sadness is real so is the joy of the Lord what you're going through is real but so is where you're going to oh but I'm in the valley but so are you going up to the mountain but I've been in Egypt but you are going to the promised land there's always something to exaggerate and there is always someone to exalt if you choose to exalt his name your problem will become smaller in your eyes I'm not saying it will disappear it will have its proper place in your eyes if you exalt the promise of God the power of God the word of God the peace of God and give God glory due to his name you will be delivered from exaggeration delivered from giving devil any credit you will have nothing left for the devil you may say why is he jumping I'm just excited come on somebody exalting God brings peace exaggerating giants brings pain the Bible says the moment Israelites exaggerated their giant guess what happened they started to weep and cry and wail they spent all night saying my God we are such a victims of uh, man we are going to die things are not really good every time we exaggerate we will have suffering internal self-inflicted pain but how many of you ever been in the presence of God you exalted God problems are still the same you may still have the same sickness and still the same child that is misbehaving but you walk out and there's one thing that exalting God does it doesn't always fix everything at once but you have shalom shalom you're walking and the storm is raging but when the prince of peace is alive inside of you there is a sense of all is well with my soul 
everything's gonna be all right you're looking at your spouses it, 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 God got it everything is good you're like no you, you're crazy no no when you exalt God he gives you peace that passes understanding surpasses knowledge meaning God he just skips over you don't make it doesn't make sense to be peaceful at this point it doesn't make sense to be calm at this season you should be scared angry you should react but God's peace because it comes from exalting God exalting God also causes us to delight in good things exaggerating our giants causes us to despise good things when I exalt God I begin to find pleasure in God's promise and enjoy God's process I'm not there yet I'm not where you are at I'm not where you him her are there but if I know I am in the center of God's will and I know one thing God is a moving God I rejoice in the process I don't just rejoice when he opens the door I dance in the hallway why because I am in the process you don't despise the process and the promise because when you're exalting God you have a joy in the process you know that yes it's not where we're supposed to be but it's not where we used to be and the best part is God is moving us forward God is moving us forward out of our debt God is moving us forward we're gonna have our own house God is moving us forward we will have children God is moving us forward our children will serve God God is moving us forward my parents will serve God God is moving us forward forward we will not live this unhealthy we will be physically healthy God is moving us forward and I celebrate small little things why because I delight in the process promise and I delight in the process when you exaggerate the problems you will always despise the process you will hate the process and you will typically despise the promises of God if we don't exalt God we will exaggerate our past what did Israel do the moment they started to exaggerate their problems they started to also exaggerate how good life was in Egypt so why did you all cry to get free from Egypt? <laughs> See when you lose the attention of God you begin to exaggerate the good and the bad of the past especially the bad. People begin to remember man my life on drugs that was so fun. Really? Because that's not what your testimony said. That was so great man at that time in before that was so great and the crazy part is when they got to the promised land they start exaggerating how good the wilderness was. But in the wilderness they always complained that it was bad hoping to go to Egypt they go to the promised land they're saying oh man but the wilderness it would have been better to die in the wilderness when they were in the wilderness they said it would have been better to die in Egypt come on make up your mind what do you want to be why when we don't exalt we exaggerate so the best way to build a new stronghold of righteousness in you is through exaltation of God when you feel like the enemy is creeping in infiltrating your mind begin to worship because worship is warfare because worship what it does is it brings down exaggerations and it begins to exalt God and you can never ex you can never exaggerate God by exalting him come on somebody amen and practically how we do that is we exalt God's presence we enjoy the present and we exercise patience in the process now lastly I'm gonna bring this to an end are you still with me so the walls of lies somebody said the walls of lies somebody say the towers of exaggeration of exaggeration and the last one is the thoughts to be taken captives. I want you to write this down. You're either captive to your thoughts or you will keep your thoughts captive. Your thoughts, you can't erase them. Like the Bible that says that Paul says when we go up to the mountain, he says we're going to bring down the strongholds, meaning we're going to break down the walls of lies. He says we're gonna take down the tower of exaggeration and we're gonna exalt God come on and then he says this there is these little commanders running around in that hill They're, they are calling the shots they're the captains right now and Paul doesn't say we're gonna execute them watch this Paul does not say we're gonna take them out we're gonna he says this we are gonna turn them into prisoners so we're gonna take captains and take them and make them captives so that means that as a Christian when you begin to take down the strongholds you must understand few very simple practical things. One of them is this we have to capture our thoughts before we make them captive. That means that we have to 
before we take our thoughts captive we have to be aware of them which is called mindfulness listening to your words listen to your words because they reveal your thoughts and ultimately what is in your heart before you take your thoughts captive you have to become aware of what they are you are not your thoughts your expression of your thoughts you are a spirit not a mind you have a mind and as a Christian you can control your mind not the other way around now the world today believes most of the world that your brain and your mind is the same thing so your brain the biological part and your mind you know is the spiritual part and they're saying it's the same thing even though there's more scientific studies that have been proven already that your brain is not your mind a brain and the mind is the same thing as a piano and a pianist. Your brain is the piano. Your mind is the pianist. Your brain doesn't control you. You control your brain. That's why the Bible would never tell us think on these things. It would just say whatever your brain thinks just let it think. No, 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 no. The Bible says to us that we can play the keys of our brain not that the brain plays on itself and we're like oh my gosh I don't like the melody God says if you don't like it change what you're putting on those keys you can change your thoughts my friend because you are a spirit and the Bible says take our thoughts captive not be captive to our thoughts but take them captive but to take them captive we have to be aware of what they are what are those dominant thoughts what are the default thoughts why do you quickly automatically by default without thinking think the first thing when they do that when that happens why is the first thought sp spurs out of your soul and out of your heart you capture that you can captivate it until you capture it meaning you oh okay that's what the thought is coming that is the dominant thought you begin to identify it the second thing is we should train our thoughts instead of trusting them many people trust their thoughts bible tells us to teach our thoughts your thoughts cannot be trusted never in the bible we will see to trust your thoughts it always says to trust in god we trust the truth not our thoughts your thoughts are unpredictable your thoughts they are the a lot of times the enemy we go into the hill and we make them captives not friends captives that means we train them we subdue them we handcuff them we don't trust our thoughts people who live in the spiritual strongholds are this they always take their thoughts as God's word a thought came into my mind it must be true not everything that is in your head is true the Bible says a man should not trust his heart because a heart is deceitful above all things. We trust God with our thoughts. We train our thoughts. David says he trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. Your thoughts need to be trained the same way your muscles are need to be worked out. You cannot live a slave to your thoughts. You have to make your thoughts a slave to you. Can somebody say amen? Oh but I can't do it. That's a lie because God's word says you should God will never ask you something he doesn't give you strength for if you are born again you can if you are born again you should and if you are born again with the Holy Spirit it won't be easy but it's possible and that's what the word of God teaches us and I'm going to finish it with this I think it was Rick Warren that coined the word think think how to think and we're going to take the uh, acronym for from that T stands for test every thought H stands for helmet of salvation meaning you live consciously that you are safe I stands for imagine great thoughts meaning begin to fantasize good things imagine great thoughts N stands for nourish your mind daily and K stands for keep on learning so we test our thoughts we imagine good thoughts and we begin to proactively live our life so that our mind is not a junkyard it's not a garbage dump that our mind is not a place of restlessness but a place of peace a place of prosperity may God put his wall of protection around our mind may God build a tower that a righteous man can run into and hide called God's word
and may God have angels and our thoughts running and doing God's bidding in our mind and every once in a while when they misbehave we <laughs> discipline them kindly spank them and get our thoughts in alignment amen I want us to pray for that today we are right now in this season where a lot of spiritual warfare is happening to people we are in a season where a lot of people are in fear where I've met more people in the last two weeks who can't sleep at night that honestly I remember meeting in the last two years there's a lot of conflict that happens and I'm not going to blame everything on us but definitely we have a role to play in walking in our freedom and walking in our dominion it's time to fight back it's time to pull down the strongholds of lies it's time to look at what tower have I built by exaggerating something that is not in line with God's Word and bring that tower down it's time to take every thought that you have ordained as a chief of police and a captain and a sheriff and you gave them unlimited authority to do whatever they want and you trust every word without questioning them you take those thoughts and you say sit down you're stripped from your authority give me that badge back why you're a lying thought you're not truthful you say whatever you see on the news and on Facebook you are not and you're not even good to me so from now on I'm not working for you you are working for me I'm gonna teach you the Word of God I'm gonna teach you what God says and you're gonna think lovely thoughts peaceful thoughts things that are good and of good report lovely and just and noble you're gonna think you're gonna act right why because you are gonna be my captive I'm no longer gonna be your captive amen let's begin to pray right now but the first and foremost what I want to do right now is I want us to exalt God 60 seconds 120 seconds I want you to just exalt them right now the way we exaggerate it I want us to do exactly the same way right now except exalt exalt him exalt his promise exalt his faithfulness exalt his goodness in your life exalt everything that he has been to you right now I want you to take your eyes off of your problem off of your giant off of the walls off of the troubles and I want you to just open up your lips the way you complain I want you to worship the same way right now the way you go walk around the house and whine how your life is not good right now I want you to begin to lift him up and begin to say the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever the Lord is good and he has unfailing he renews his mercy every morning he saved me he healed me he delivered me he sanctifies me come on church I want to hear your voice I want to hear from the back to the front and those of you watching us on live stream this is a moment to exalt the king of kings to exalt the prince to exalt the prince of peace to exalt the everlasting father to exalt the wonderful counselor let's begin to exalt him let's begin to exalt him we exalt him we exalt you we exalt you jesus oh jesus you are mighty god you work wonders the darkness my god that's who you are right now I want you to begin to right now exalt above anything that's dominating in your life if it's sickness begin to say Lord I exalt you above that disease I exalt you if it's a demonic influence begin to say Lord I exalt you against right now that sickness I exalt you right now above that problem I exalt you above that marital issue I exalt you above that situation right now begin to vocalize it verbalize it right now 
Yes, Father God, we exalt you right now, Jesus. We exalt you above our circumstances, Lord. You are the one that deserves to be exalted, Lord. We thank you that your word is yes and amen, God. Despite of our circumstances, God, despite of what we're going through or what we're feeling in our bodies, God, you deserve to be praised, God. And your word stands forever. And it's the truth, God. And we worship you, Jesus. We worship you for who you are. We worship you for that you are a great God in Jesus' mighty name. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I agree, I agree with, your word with your word as my truth. And I disagree with every lie, with everything that's true, but is not your truth. I disagree with the devil. I disagree with my illness. I disagree with depression. I disagree with spirit of fear. I disagree with the curse of poverty. I disagree with generational curses. I break that lie over my life, over my mind, over my emotions. In Jesus' name, I bring you down. I bring you down. In Jesus' mighty name. Right now, I want us to pray for our thoughts. For those people who feel like your mind has become just this buzz and there is no purity of thoughts. There is no consistency in thoughts. Place your hand upon your mind right now. It's just a symbol. It's just your brain. Your mind is not in your brain. But we're just going to play right now for our thoughts. I want you to right now, instead of praying, I want you to begin to take your thoughts captive. Begin to say, I take my thoughts captive in the name of Jesus. I'm the captain of the ship. I'm the captain of the soul. My spirit, I take my thoughts captive right now in the name of Jesus. Every thought that is running rampant against the will of God, I take it captive right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we just take captive every thought that rises against your word in Jesus' name. We pull down every demonic stronghold upon our minds, our thoughts in Jesus' name. We come against you stronghold and we take you captive in Jesus name. We bless our mind right now and we command our mind to align to the Word of God in Jesus name. We take captive every thought that rises above the knowledge of the truth of Jesus Christ right now in Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Yes Lord, we're gonna trust you with our thoughts. Lord, but we're not going to trust our thoughts. We're going to train our thoughts. We're going to test our thoughts, Lord. We're going to choose what we put our mind in, uh, what we put into our mind. We're going to choose new imaginations, Lord. We choose today, Lord God, to keep our mind pure. We choose, God, today, Father, that you will guard our mind as we fix our gaze on you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I take a moment right now and I rebuke every spirit of depression in the name of mighty Jesus. I rebuke every spirit of fear in Jesus' name. I rebuke also insomnia in the mind mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every intrusive thought, every intrusive thought, suicidal tendencies in the mighty name of Jesus be broken right now in Jesus name. Every self-hate, every self-hate, every single self-hate, I rebuke that and self-rejection be broken over people's minds right now. I lose you right now in Jesus mighty name. I lose you to walk in freedom. I lose you to walk in your in your victory i lose you to walk in the fullness of god's word in the fullness of god's grace in the fullness of god's love for you in jesus mighty name i lose you from the spirit of poverty that you will walk in abundance in your mind that you will walk accepted in your mind that you will wear the helmet of salvation in the mighty name of jesus christ in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ in jesus name